OpenAI just launched their flagship models and in the next five minutes you will know everything about these models. The first big hype is from the economist Tyler Cohen who says benchmarks, benchmarks, blah, 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 blah. Maybe AGI is like beep. I know it when I see it and I have seen it. And I'm here to tell you that this is nowhere closer to AGI. And if there is one important lesson that you have to take away from this five minute video and the big hype launch from OpenAI, it is that scale works. OpenAI models have been trained again and again with more compute. And what this tells us is that more compute, more data, model size actually works. Test time scaling works and also the train time scaling works. So either way, these are the models of bigger than size trained more with a lot more data. Now about the model in itself, the model comes with a lot of impressive benchmarks, but the benchmarks have some nuances. Very importantly, OpenAI has shown these benchmarks with tools. So some numbers are with tools, some numbers are without tools. What does it mean? For example, if you want to ask a model two plus two, now one way of answering this question is just using the knowledge that the model has got. So two plus two is equal to four. But the other way is to use tools. So if, whenever you see a benchmark that says tools here, that means OpenAI has either not given any access to a tool or OpenAI has given access to a particular tool. So in this case, code forces, which is a coding competition, OpenAI has got the latest model O3, but with access to terminal. They've given bash to their model and the model has used the code uh, to run whatever that it wants to do and then scored this particular mark. So there is a difference in the benchmarks or the nuances that you have to understand. Keep that thing in mind. A co-founder Greg Brockman said that these models are better than him at coding. And if you were to see a benchmark, SWE bench verified. So O3 has scored 69 and O4 mini has scored 68.1. For context, if you were to see the same benchmark, with Claude 3.7 Sonnet, it has scored 62.3% without any scaffolding and 70.3%, which is like you have got different scaffolding that makes it more agentic. With that, it has scored 70.3. So I don't think that whatever that OpenAI has launched is mind-blowingly different. O3 high has scored 81.3%. I don't think we get access to O3 high, which we probably will get later or O3 Pro users will get. O4 mini high has scored 68.9 on either polyglot code editing. If there is one thing that this model is supposed to be good at, it is agentic use cases. So O3 and O4 mini, all these models should be much better than their existing models in agents and tool calling. And that is something that you can also see from the benchmarks in itself, because these models ground up, they've trained it to make sure that it works seamlessly with agents. And also another thing is, it is cheaper than O1 and O3 mini. So for the same task that you used to use O1 for, now you can use O3 high, O3 medium, O3 low for a much lower cost. You can get a similar performance. In fact, much better performance. Overall, these things would make this model a good developer choice. I think the most interesting thing here is not the benchmark, but what OpenAI has tried to do with something what they call as thinking with images. So the benchmarks are really good. Like if you see this model, this is almost as comparable with Claude 3.7 Sonnet, much better than 3.7 Sonnet on different benchmarks. The most important thing is OpenAI has claimed that they have created a new concept called thinking with images. This is like a reasoning model, but multimodal. So whenever you give an image and ask a question, OpenAI has got these tools like Python tools that can zoom in, crop it, and then reverse the image, invert the image, turn the image, flip the image, everything that it has to do to get the right answer. I think in my opinion, that is one of the best things that they have done with this particular family of models. The models are just simply very simple, best, best, best. O3, O4 mini, these are the new models that they've given. And these models are right away available for you to use if you have a ChatGPT Plus subscription. If you've got ChatGPT Plus, you can go clip the drop down, and then you would see O3, O4 mini. So O3 uses the advanced reasoning and O4 mini is the latest model and O4 mini high is the model that you want if you want the absolute best for coding related tasks. But in fact, the much better news or the bigger scoop today is that OpenAI is in talks to acquire Windsurf, which is a coding editor that is almost valued at $3 billion. And OpenAI itself has got something called OpenAI Codex, which is almost equivalent to Claude 
code. I hope this gave you a speed run of what OpenAI launched today. Use the models and then let me know if Taylor Cohen is wrong or not wrong. Let me know in the comment section. See you in another video. Happy prompting.